Now, as I was saying before, I have a lot of material I am literally going to be flying through. Lord willing, I'll be able to get through this in time. Now, if any of you have studied the history of the Illuminati, you're going to recognize this gentleman immediately. This man is Dr. Adam Weishaupt. He was the f very first head of the Order of the Illuminati. Back in 1773, when he held the chair of the professorship of Jewish canon law at the University of Ingolstadt in Bavaria, Germany, he was approached by Maya Amschel Bauer and 12 of his most financially influential friends, which makes up your first covenant of 13, if you would. And they basically approached this man and said, listen, you've got the occult knowledge and the genius who put it all together. We've got the money. You do it, we'll back it. This is just paraphrasing the whole thing. But basically, three years later, on May 1st, 1776, Dr. Adam Weishaupt had succeeded in culminating the plans of the Illuminati, their complete organizational structure, the belief, the whole thing. This man was considered an expert in most of the occult schools of his day and age. Now, we're going to be getting into this part of it later, but the idea of Illuminism did not begin with this man. It can actually be traced all the way back to Babylon around 3,500 B.C. We will be getting into this. The gentleman underneath Dr. Weishaupt is Baron Adolf von Koenig. It was through this man's brilliancy that the Illuminati really began to flourish. 2,000 of the most powerful, influential people in Germany joined the Order of the Illuminati in a matter of years because of this man. We are talking about these people, they had three things in common. They had wealth, they had power, and they had letters. That is to say, they were intellectuals. Now think about this for a second. Could you imagine what we could do right now as, as a um, Christian people if we could gather the 2,000 wealthiest people in America? What could we do for Christ then? Literally, we would do what the apostles did and turn the world upside down. How many people recognize this familiar symbol? Okay. If you people would be good enough, please take a dollar bill out because we're going to be going through this. Where's the water? Okay, if everyone has their dollar bill out, you'll please follow me, follow along. You will notice on your dollar bill, this seal will appear on the left-hand side. Okay, you will notice at the very top of the pyramid, a 13-letter expression, and directly beneath it, another one. This is, in Latin, it says, annuit corruptus novus ordo seclorum, which means announcing the birth of a new world order. This new world order, now if you look at the bottom of the pyramid in Roman numerals, it says MDCCLXXVI. This is um, 1776, but we are not talking about July 4th. We are talking about May 1st, 1776, the very day in which the Illuminati was officiated. I will be able to show this part of it to you afterwards as far as the proof that this is indeed May 1st. You will notice, the pyramid itself is made up of 13 levels. Now, how many, now, I'm sure many of us have heard of numerology before. This is where you take numbers and assign them to letters, correct? You will notice there's another system in the occult that's known as gematria. Gematria will give you the definition to those numbers. In other words, 6 is the number for man, um, 36 is the number for the enemy, 16 is the number for love, and I'm sure we all know what the number 666 means, correct? Right. Going back to the seal, again, there are 13 levels to it. 13 in gematria is the number for depravity and rebellion you'll notice that the pyramid itself is easily discerned 
to be a three-dimensional object. You can tell by this and over here, it has four sides. When you look at the capstone, however, you can't tell that at all. It just remains to be just a triangle and nothing more. That's because in their cult, those three sides represent the false prophet, the beast, and the antichrist. You will notice we are led to believe that that is supposed to be the all-seeing eye of God. If it were, in symbology, that capstone's in the wrong position. It would have to be coming down the point, which would be God looking into the affairs of man. In the reverse position as it is right now, it's man invading the heavenlies. That is the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. Even though he thinks he's all-seeing, he isn't. In short, what this entire seal is saying is that on May 1st, 1776, a new world order had come about. It would be based on depravity and rebellion and headed by Lucifer. Now, if you will take a look to the right-hand side of your dollar bill, you will notice the all-familiar eagle, correct? You will notice that there are 13 stars, a 13-letter banner, um, the eagles holding the banner, the breastplate, the arrows, tail feathers, and the olive branch. I'm going to switch to a black and white one because the breastplate especially breaks up into a certain um, pattern that you need to take a good look at. Starting at the very top, you will notice the cluster of 13 stars. Surrounding those 13 stars are 28 guidelines. 28 in gematria stands for eternity, or that which is eternal. Directly beneath those 13 stars, you will notice the eagle is holding a 13-letter banner. The banner in Latin says E Pluribus Unum. Translated, E Pluribus Unum means one out of many. But the question is, one out of many what? When Dr. Adam Weishaupt was formulating the Illuminati, he was infiltrating the Masons, the Jesuits, the Rosicrucians, and other occult schools of his day and age. What he was doing was taking the best and the brightest minds out of these organizations and bringing them into his own. What he was doing was forming one group out of many group. This is what that is talking to. You will notice the eagle is looking to the right. Whenever the bird, symbolically speaking, looks to the right, it's looking on in favor of whatever it's looking towards. Compare, compare this to the Nazi war bird of World War II, where it was looking to the left, away in opposition. In other words, it was not looking on in favor. An eagle bird, correct? Most people have never seen the original seal that was accepted by Congress in 1782. This seal, which bears um, the eagle, was only designed like that back in 1933. In other words, that was the first time the eagle itself appeared on the seal. I'm going to show you the original one, and then you try to tell me what it looks like. The Egyptian phoenix, correct. According to Egyptian mythology, the phoenix bird itself would live for about four to five hundred years, afterwards it would come down upon the face of the earth and be consumed in its own fire. Out of the ashes, an egg would be left behind, and out of that egg, a new phoenix bird would emerge. This would complete the cycle of reincarnation. This particular um, eagle is not what we call a perfect one because the wings have 32 feathers and one has 33. This is because they represent the two factors of masonry. One um, factor, the York right has 32 degrees the th and the um, Scottish right has 33 degrees. We're going to get into the Masons and how they've been fooled. And literally 95% of all Masons do not realize that they've been victimized. 